Hey everyone. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm here to talk about. I'm up on my roof, so I wanted to try a different um, backdrop to talking, and um, it's really bright out here, my gosh. Anyway, so um, I was thinking about the, the fact I was comparing in my mind the way that Abraham Hicks talks about meditation and the way that my guru used to talk about it, which is like philosophically, they're really similar, but um, there was one word that kept popping up that I wanted to delve into a little bit because I felt like I had some insights as well about it, um, which is the word observation. So when Abraham Hicks talks about observation, she's often talking about observing conditions. Um, which she sort of advises against, like she's kind of uh, talking about getting more into what you want to manifest rather than observing what is already there and complaining about it, basically. But um, my guru used to use the word observation in a completely different way because what you do when you meditate is observe. Um, you're observing things, whatever's coming to you, you have the power to observe and study in a kind of, maybe objective is the wrong word, but I think, it, I think it's the best kind of serviceable word in this context in the sense that um, you kind of go into a scientific observation mode where you're not you're not judging and you're not even focused that much on what you prefer or don't prefer you're just absorbing and being aware and being present and oh that sounds so new agey be present um but you know what i'm talking about like when you you know if you've never played sports um when you get very focused and you're in the moment then you become very powerful and meditation um, is quite similar to that there's other things i mean actually when you're reading a book it's also very similar because you're completely surrendered to the next word on the page and you're not thinking oh gosh i hope this book doesn't turn out badly like usually not you're just kind of surrendered to um to the moment but also the anticipation of the next moment so it's it's very engaged and um, so I think when Abraham Hicks talks about observation it's more like the judgmental it's more judging like it's more the judgmental part of, of observation where actually I think my guru was talking about observation as the initial part where you just perceive something and it washes over you um, and you know that you're aware and you know that you're experiencing something but you haven't started sifting and sorting yet. Um, yes. Because what my guru was describing as observing is a lot closer, I think, to what Abraham Hicks described as the receptive mode, which is um, pretty crucial, I would say. I remember in one lecture she gave, she talked about how she mentions we. I, there's something so impactful about like a channeled entity using the royal we. <laughs> we, um, do you know, she said like, do you know how often we talk about meditation? And how often, how many people come away from our lectures remembering everything? except the bit about meditation, which is, um, it, it's a symptom of two things. One, one is the fact that the brain is hardwired to move toward the ego. Um, so any kind of conflict or any kind of obsession, you know, it, it might be like um, something that you're attracted to engaging with or something that you're attracted to pushing against 
but um, both of those things feed into the ego, <clears throat> which Abraham never, ever, ever demonizes. But um, but meditation is not that interesting for the ego or the mind because it's not really a stimulating thing. Um, <clears throat> it's mostly just acceptance. It's like you're, you're sitting quietly and you're accepting what comes. And I would say that observation is actually quite a powerful, like an important tool because there's a degree of curiosity which is not obsessive, which is incredibly useful and um, actually rewarding. So, um, yeah, the trouble with meditation, <clears throat> you can't expect that you're going to want to meditate like automatically the same way that you might want to go for a run or go to the gym or have a hot bath because there's no sense there's no kind of human sense in terms of tasting, uh, tasting, touching, smelling that is yearning for meditation. All of those senses, the current is positive. It's going outward. So um, it is only the sense of, fortunately, there's a fifth sense, which is like the sense of atmosphere, the sense of vibes. Uh, that one usually does, in fact, yearn for meditation. But it is the subtlest, quietest sense as compared to probably sight is the strongest. Um, you know, depending on your condition, you know, there are people who, anyway, <laughs> this is such a ramble, you know, it's, it's, it's the sun really, like I'm not a solar entity, so, um, my brain works slower in sunlight. My father was, uh, a sun worshiper and he used to constantly try to drag me to the beach. And as you can see by my skin tone, <clears throat> I do not do well in the sun. And I think when he first came to Thailand, he took me, he was very excited to go to the islands. So we went to Koh Samui, which is like a, it's kind of a destination. <clears throat> and I was, we went to the beach and I was meditating. Um, because I have discovered that, like, I'm really into these elemental meditations. So, like, even though I'm not I'm so harmonious with the sun, I can tap into it and use the energy of the sun to transcend, which I can do with water, steam, whatever, elemental stuff. Um, and so I was doing that. Um, but I was also aware that I could get sunburned. So I was in the shade of a palm tree. I got sunburned so badly in the shade. Like, every part of my body was covered by shadow. Um, I got so badly sunburned that um, I had to stay in bed for a week. And so my father got his just desserts because he kept wanting to go and see things and I couldn't move. <laughs> and he's like, what about today? You want to go snorkeling? He's like, no. I'm in agony. <coughs> anyway. I don't know what I'm going to call this video, but it is extremely organic, like more than usual. Those of you who've been following my channel have probably thought, wow, well, he, I think somebody was like, get to the point already in the comments. And um, I do go bushwhacking from my own point and then forget it, actually. Um, I can usually fi find my way back to the main topic, but... I have noticed upon watching my own videos that there are several incidences where I um, I was in the middle of a sentence and then like if, if you were to transcribe it, it would make no sense actually. But I think if you're listening to it, you can get something out of it. Okay. Anyway, bye. <laughs>